I wanted to ask Frank, we've talked about it a lot, but you have had this long association with downtown Los Angeles, not only with Disney Hall, but your understanding of downtown LA and particularly Bunker Hill in the cultural district. And I thought you could talk a little bit about that and how our project that you've designed so magnificently fits into uh, to your vision for downtown LA. So I used to live on 9th Street and worked at a jewelry store on 3rd Street and parked my car on Bunker Hill and used the um, trolleys to come to work. Um, so I know the area. You know. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Well, for me, I met a guy named Ernest Fleischman. <laughs> and I think he became my music teacher for many years. Um, and I worked with him on the Hollywood Bowl, and almost anything he asked me to do that had to do with the L.A. Phil and Zubin and all of that culture, uh, I loved it and, and couldn't get enough of it. Uh, so we remodeled the bowl. I, did, I actually did the restrooms at the bowl. You should. <laughs> <laughs> They're great restrooms. They really are. They are wonderful. Uh, um, you know, this creating a cultural district is, is I guess, everybody's dream. Uh, New York has one, so we should have one. Uh, there have been some. Uh, we had we had the Chandler. We we have the Chandler. Uh, we have the theaters. Um, the orchestra got better and better uh, over the years. And Esapekka Salonen, who spent a long time here, Gustavo took me to Venezuela to see his origins in the uh, Sistema. And to, to witness kids from all walks of life, rich, poor, uh, physically disabled, even mentally uh, impaired, playing in an orchestra like they're treated like the real thing. And uh, there's, it's, it's an incredible legacy that Gustavo came from and believes in. And that's why the Ola project was so important to him. And I got really taken in by it personally. And, uh, and I, I, as I think about all of your performance venues, there's this evolution. You're, you're constantly rethinking that interaction for performers, for whether they're student performers or professional performers, and the audience. And as you know, I came to your 90th birthday great party in Berlin yeah. at the Boulez Zoll. And I thought maybe you could talk a little bit about how that Boulez Zoll may influence what we've done here. Uh, well, I got involved with Barenboim because of the Israeli-Palestinian orchestra called the Daban that they created, and I, I traveled with them and got very excited about what that was doing. And uh, I, I teach at Yale in architecture for the past 20 years or so. And I give, I give every year, every time I do it, I give a concert hall. And the kids travel and see concert venues around the world and so on. I gave the project to do the Devon in Berlin, uh, or, or in, in um, I think it was in, in uh, Turkey. <laughs> and. Uh, I met Daniel and, and got involved with and been enamored with that project. And he asked me to do the hall. The hall for the students, it wasn't a big hall, it's in a, in a warehouse in Berlin. So you can't see it from the outside. We did a 700 seat hall. I volunteered and did it, made it with Yasu, 
we created a floating balcony. You know, when the balcony hits the wall, it stops the sound. When you pull it away, the thing breathes, the sound breathes. And so this small hall, we, we tested this, um, this floating balcony. Yasu was skeptical. We were all kind of worried that could it would have worked, but, but it worked like a dream. And so, God bless it, we're using it here. <laughs> and it, and it's, the, it's the, one of the busiest halls in Berlin now. Every night of the yeah. year, there's some extraordinary performance here. And I know that's our, our dream for this facility too, that it's a... Well, it's just another piece of the, of the music and the cultural puzzle here to, to have this facility, which I'm sure is gonna be used by even the opera, even the opera company will, and, my, my, next, my next dream is to fix uh, the Chandler so it can... <laughs> well, I know one of the things you were excited about and I'm so glad you insisted on was a, an orchestral pit for the hall. You're not only an incredible designer, urban planner, architect, but you also design opera sets. You insisted in our new facility that we have a pit and I'm so happy you did. There's one under the seats in Disney Hall somewhere buried <laughs> that we got we to gotta open it up again. But I, I think that, that opera, you know, Gustavo is in Paris because he loves opera. I can imagine once this pit, this building's built and the pit is there, we'll be, the transferring between buildings is gonna be exciting because they're going to be all, all different sizes. So this doesn't take away from the opera house. It just adds another piece to their puzzle. How about the ceiling? Let's talk about that incredible ceiling. You've never <laughs> done anything like it before. No. Uh, I think it'll come up in just well, a second. Craig Webb, my partner, I think he's here somewhere. Uh, we were looking at the ceiling, and, and we actually were looking at Magritte's painting of the clouds and just put it there just for fun, thinking this is, doesn't mean anything, it's not gonna be relevant. And I realized that when we built Disney Hall, since it's open, uh, Esapeka and, and, and uh, Gustavo, I always ask, can they put musicians in different parts of the hall? Because they wanna spread the sound and, and envelop the audience. And, and they get excited about doing that, but it's hard to do it if you haven't planned. So since this is a school and we can play, right? We can try stuff right. and not get beat up for doing it and create an intimacy between the ceiling and, and and the audience. Not just, not just from the sides, but from... Right. And it's, you know, it's an experiment. I think it'll work. You guys will figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was an opportunity to do it. And, and so the cloud stayed. We didn't do a sort of a, a ersatz Magritte. It, they are really, they are functional elements that are thick enough to, to take care of bouncing the sound where it's needed to be, to be. And we've worked with Yasu's guys to make the shapes work exactly where they want them. So. Well, you mentioned Yasu, and I was gonna ask you, you've had this amazing relationship with Yasu on so many projects, and what's that collaboration like? He's, he understands music and loves it, and um, we trust, we learn to, to trust him a lot. The main thing is that the engineering doesn't overwhelm the personal thing, the, the human uh, feeling. The, the main thing to make in a concert hall is to make it a connection between the audience and the performers. Just like in theater, it's, it's uh, what's his name? Shakespeare said that. <laughs> All the world's a stage. It's true. I mean, I've, I've over the years spoken in high school auditoriums or college auditoriums that are terrible. You feel no contact, and and that's that's the game. So that 
Yasu understands that. He really gets it. And, and, and so everything we do is scaled so it makes those connections, it improves those connections or uh, makes that happen. I hope this will become a, a catalyst to more community interaction between the opera company and the Philharmonic and the school. This is the, the big chance yes. to do it. It is. Yes. Uh, as, as we've talked about, there is not a hall of this size in Los Angeles. Yeah. And the fact that it has this big platform that with the pit, it almost allows us to dream. And I, I've talked to Jimmy Conlon, and he's interested. It's a real opportunity. It is. Well, thank you, Frank, for everything. And we're just so excited for the next phase. So I'm get so moving. excited, too.